the unit impulse function or delta function finds a great utility in the study of uh, signal processing and communication systems. The impulse function is defined to exist only at a specific time. For example, f of t has a non-zero value, in this case it is 1, for a specific time that is t equal to 0, as shown in this uh, red uh, representation here that for time equal to 0, t equal to 0, it has an amplitude of 1. And for all other values of time, it is equal to 0. So it has an amplitude of 1 for time t equal to 0. And for all other values of time, the function is having an amplitude of 0. And because of its uh, special utility, the function f of t, the unit impulse function, is denoted as delta of t using the Greek letter delta. So delta of t is existing only for t equal to 0 and it is it does not exist for all other values of time. We call it as the unit impulse function when the amplitude of the impulse is equal to 1 as in this case. So what we have in the red, red uh, line here, the red representation in both these graphs here is the delta function which is defined for t equal to 0 and having an amplitude equal to 1. Now we can have shifted versions of the unit impulse function so we can have shifted versions as in the black lines that are denoted in these graphs so the one which is uh, delta of t minus 1 is a function which is having a value of 1 for t equals 1 and 0 for t not equal to 1. So basically delta of t minus 1 which we have here is nothing but the right shifted version of the unit impulse function delta of t. So, so we can write it as delta of t minus 1 is right shifted version of delta of t. Similarly, uh, what we have in the lower plot here is a left shifted version of delta of t. So the delta of t plus 1 is nothing but delta of t shifted to the left by one time unit. So you can define the left shifted version as so the left shift is for example delta of t plus 1 is defined to exist and have an amplitude of 1 when time t equals minus 1 that is if you notice here for time t equals minus 1 it has an amplitude of 1 and for all other values of time the function is 0 so 0 for t not equal to minus 1. So delta of t plus 1 delta of t plus 1 is the left shifted version of delta of t. And in both these cases the amount of shift is one time unit so it is shifted to the right by one time unit and this is shifted to the left by one time unit similarly we can have it shifted by uh, multiple time units but in general if we represent the amount of shift as some ts so so if we denote the shift shift as some ts then we can have it as say delta of t minus ts 
which is shifted by a time unit ts to the right or we can have it as delta of t plus ts which is shifted to the left by an amount equal to ts and if we have shifts by integer multiples of ts so we can then denote that as say delta of t minus 2 ts or t plus 2 ts delta of t plus 2 ts and so on or in general we can write it as delta of t plus or minus n ts where n can take any integer value and whenever the shift is to the right it is having a minus sign here and when the shift is towards the left then the uh, sign should be plus and in all these cases uh, we say that the amplitude of the impulse function is 1 and hence it is called as the unit impulse function so that means we can also have the case where the amplitude of the delta function is uh, some other value other than 1 which we will see shortly here so we have denoted two delta functions here the first one is so the red one is the unshifted version delta of t but now if you notice it is having an amplitude of t uh, amplitude of 2 that is so we can call it as 2 delta of t so it is 2 times delta of t and the the black impulse function here is having an amplitude of 1.5 but it exists as ta at time t equal to 3 so it is existing at time t equal to 3 that means it is shifted to the right by an amount equal to 3 and it has an amplitude of 1.5 so we denote that as 1.5 delta of t minus 3 so it is minus 3 because it is shifted to the right by an amount of 3 time units so <clears throat> So what we have uh, in the red plot is uh, basically the function we can write it as for example uh, y of t is equal to 2 times delta of t which is nothing but it has an amplitude of 2 for t equal to 0 and amplitude 0 for t not equal to 0. <coughs> Similarly, the uh, the black impulse function, which is this one, we can uh, write that or represent that as. So, just let me just to distinguish, call this as y one of t, and we'll write the black impulse as uh, y two of t, and that will be it is one point five. It's having an amplitude of one point five and it is delta of t minus 3 which is nothing but it has an amplitude of 1.5 for t equals 3 and amplitude 0 for all other values of t uh, that is for t not equal to 3 so uh, the impulse function has uh, great utility in this in, in communication systems and signal processing as you will see in later lectures but the, uh, the, the, the point that I need to emphasize here in this uh, lecture is that the impulse function is defined only for a specific time and it, it has a particular amplitude only at that specific time and for all other values of time its value is zero. <coughs> and when the amplitude is equal to 1 we denote that impulse function as a unit impulse function and if the amplitude is any other value we simply call it as an impulse function and we can have this impulse function or delta function shifted to the left or right and it has uh, it has uh, utility in uh, understanding and analyzing different types of signals and also in the concept of uh, Fourier analysis.
right and the other thing I want to highlight is suppose we have multiple impulse functions uh, together constituting a particular signal for example if we take this uh, red impulse and the black impulse together as uh, one function you can simply denote that as uh, y of t y of t is equal to y1 of t plus y2 of t which is simply 2 delta of t plus 1.5 delta of t minus 2 right and in this way we can add as many impulses as we want to denote uh, different combinations of signals so and we will see <coughs> in, uh, in later videos how this can be used in the analysis of signals and also in studying communication systems.